Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. This is Sandra and today's video is going to be sharing my experience all about my new job as a security analyst. All right, so if you guys have been following me since about a month ago when I posted my I quit my first cybersecurity job video, which I can link below if you haven't seen it. But basically, I just wanted to share a little bit about my experience in my new job since I did a lot of comparisons in that video. So I do want to kind of share what I've learned so far just in my recent experience in my new job. So I'll be talking about a few different topics, so feel free to jump around. And the first topic is going to be about work-life balance. Okay, so I feel like this is a very hot topic because I know I mentioned I work in a smaller company, but I don't think I mentioned that my company is basically like a startup, but maybe in the later phases of that startup life cycle. And I also feel like startups are notoriously known to have poor work-life balance or just a very grindy hustle culture where everyone works like eight to eight. So I definitely think this is one of the areas I was the most unsure of when I started this new role. Since in my previous role, I did have really good work-life balance. And I don't wanna say that for all large companies to have work-life balance because it really depends on your role and also your team, especially because my team did not have any on-call hours. So I was typically working the average nine to five hours that you would have at a normal job. But in my new role, I knew that since I was joining a smaller company with a team of less than 10 people in cybersecurity, I kind of figured honestly that I would be working longer hours, basically just working more but I have not seen that to be the case. Of course, I am still in training right now, so I haven't taken on everything that another full-time member of the team can do, and I'm still kind of learning the ropes, but I still think based on what I've seen, there's definitely good work-life balance in my job, and I typically do not work more than the average nine to five. Maybe sometimes I work up to six or seven, but it's typically not every day, so definitely something to keep in mind. Just because you're working for a startup or a smaller company doesn't mean that you necessarily will have to be working long hours. And I actually think a lot of smaller companies nowadays really put an emphasis on work-life balance. As long as you're, you know, not like a two or three person startup and you're just really grinding it out, then you're probably, you know, up all night coding and actually grinding like a startup. But nowadays, a lot of startups really value work-life balance. And I've noticed that a lot of people who I work with are also very much in that time where they are focused on the outside parts of their life like family so i think that's definitely something important to value because even as someone like me who only has three years of experience it definitely emphasizes the importance of work-life balance for the company and it's really nice also that you can see it from top down and that's something that i've seen personally just with my manager in the last one to two months and and i overall just think i'm very lucky to have so much flexibility with my work even as i'm working from home and before we continue, I'd like to thank PureVPN for sponsoring today's video. PureVPN advances privacy protections with 1,000 times more security through quantum-resistant encryption. A small step for you and a quantum leap for your privacy. Their quantum-resistant encryption is a new feature on their OpenVPN protocol, which essentially future-proofs its users to make sure that you're always safe while you're browsing the internet online, no matter where you are especially as we head towards a post-quantum world. The feature will initially be rolled out along with split tunneling and obfuscation features. So with Pure VPN, you'll have the perfect combination of speed, security, and compatibility. So if you guys are interested in learning more about Pure VPN to help keep you protected while you're browsing the internet, you can check out more at the description below. Thanks so much to Pure VPN for sponsoring and let's get back to the video. Okay, second update on this list is just working remotely and how that's been going. So you guys know in my previous job, I was originally full time in the office five days a week and when this pandemic started I transitioned into remote work with my previous employer and basically I worked two years remote and that was honestly most of my career at that point because because I had only been working about eight months or so before I went fully remote when the pandemic started so I've definitely been really lucky to be able to do my work from home and I do think that's a pretty big trend in cybersecurity and tech roles in general but overall I really enjoy working from home and and I do think that one of the benefits of working from home is that you can work from anywhere and I do want to eventually plan some travel whether it just be road tripping or living in a different city for a short amount of time yeah basically just trying out different cities different environments and I think that would be really fun and I would not have been able to do that with a hybrid or a full-time in-office job which my previous company I would have had to go in five days a week in the office actually is something I can't even fathom or or expect out of my career in any job that I do nowadays and I really feel like once you start a remote role especially as someone who prefers working remote there's some people who prefer office so that kind of makes sense for those people to want to go back but for me personally I enjoy working from home and at most I would do a hybrid role if I were ever to consider working in an office again but overall I really enjoy working from home and at least I think a lot of you guys do in the comments as well based on 
my previous videos so yeah let me know in the comments below if you have any questions about the logistics of that if you're not too familiar with working from home and just working remotely okay number three on this list is a hot topic for many people and that is salary and benefits so this is also stereotypical and assumptuous of me but basically people may expect that a larger company may pay more money in terms of salary and benefits and when i was first starting out looking for jobs i had two other offers i think i also mentioned that in my previous video but both of those offers were for hybrid roles that i wasn't really too excited about and the offer that i decided to take which is my current company is the only one that was fully fully remote and i expected salaries to maybe be lower because i was fully remote because you could live from anywhere so i kind of had that mindset going in because previous to this year i've never applied to fully remote jobs it was always hybrid or you know normal office nine to five jobs but i was very surprised to see that i'm actually able to get a comparable salary from my previous job to my current job and that is something i in a million years would never have expected just because the salary that i was given in my previous job was because i lived in new york I was living in the city and because of that my salary was higher than someone else in my rotational program or or someone else in my job and when i was applying to this remote job in my current company i had kind of expected a salary decrease but i was very surprised to be able to get a salary comparable to my previous role and actually a bit more so i know i've been promising you guys a video on on my cybersecurity and tech salaries which I will make soon but again because i'm in my early career it really won't be that many roles on that list because i haven't worked that many jobs but we'll cross that bridge once we get there and i would love if you guys subscribe to this channel to stick around and see that video when it comes out and please like this video if it was helpful to you and hopefully it can help more people find this channel and learn more about cybersecurity careers but yeah basically comparable salary even in a remote job and honestly my benefits are even better i feel like a lot of smaller companies are really winning in the game of benefits and just being a good place to work because at a bigger company you typically already have processes set up for insurance and days off and just different employer benefits that come with your job and in my smaller company i currently let's just say i'm paying way way less in healthcare i actually have more days off as a whole compared to my previous company and i personally prefer the benefits of my current company better on work-life balance and health and wellness and that is something that i personally really appreciate for example one of the things that my company provides is a is a premium subscription to the calm app and i've never tried the calm app but i recently got into meditation and breathing exercises so this is definitely a huge help um, with guided meditations and basically just another perk that i use every day that my employer provides so definitely a big plus okay so you guys have heard me go on and on about the good things about my new job and obviously it's not all amazing and great i mean it is pretty good but i don't want to paint a rosy picture for you guys but but i also want to be realistic and show that this is still a job and i still have work to do at the end of the day so maybe just some downsides of my job which i really don't think any are very very bad i personally have had a, a very very positive experience in my current job the only things that i dislike about it are really just personal because because i'm definitely someone who is very type a and wants to know exactly what i can do and the benefits that i can basically provide to the team but as someone who is new to the company, I know nothing about any of our applications, any of our tools, everything that I don't know, I basically am looking up in resources and documentation, or I'm reaching out to a teammate. But I definitely think that's a personal thing because in a remote work environment, you kind of have to reach out and that's really how people communicate. There's no, there's no walking over to someone's desk and asking a question. It's always pinging someone and you may feel like you're bothering them, but, but honestly, at the end of the day, it's probably better to ping someone a question rather than sit on it versus just asking a question and then moving on with your life you know so that's definitely something i've learned about myself even in my previous job i was in a rotational program where i switched jobs basically every year because i had one year rotations but i always brought over that base level of knowledge about the company and our products with me and i never had to ask very basic questions for a long time besides the first six months on the job obviously i've only been here for less than two months so it's not expected that i know about our products but i definitely want to get to a point where where i'm able to be more self-sufficient and know the work that i have to do where to find the information who to ask rather than directly going to my teammates i can go directly to the team that my teammate would probably refer me to anyway so yeah that is a downside but not really a downside of the job but more like a downside of being a new person on the team and then i guess another thing that may be a downside for some people but in my opinion is an upside is the fact that because we're a small company there's not a lot of set processes a lot of it is we build as we go and we document as we go that to me is right up my alley because because i enjoy starting things from scratch and 
just going with the flow with what we have but i can see where some people if you come from a company where things already have a process where things aren't always changing they're set in stone and maybe changed once a year or every few years here policies procedures processes they're always changing there's always documents being edited things being changed and you always have to refer back to whatever resource that you're looking at for information because it may have changed the day after so that has its pros and cons with the pros being we're always getting better and we're always changing and molding ourselves to be a better team or a better company specifically for cybersecurity. the con may be that things are always changing so so maybe resources are less stable or you would always have to double check with someone to make sure that you have the most up-to-date information before going and providing that information or an answer to someone else okay next thing on this list is emails and meetings if you guys had watched any of my previous work vlogs you know that in the mornings i wake up i read the email for about 30 minutes and then i look at my calendar look at my meetings i think i recorded a day in my life work vlog or two on this channel in my new job so i can link one of those below if you guys want to check that out but but at my current company i basically get no emails if i log into work in the morning i probably have less than 10 unread emails in my inbox and in my previous role i used to have 50 100 just overnight and you know things just pile up I don't know if it's because I was there for a long period of time, but we definitely have a company culture of less emails, less meetings as well. Some teams like to have no meetings on Fridays. My team is also very light with meetings, although I do have onboarding meetings just because I'm a new person. So, but I'm the only one who gets those meetings as a beginner. But overall, my team doesn't really have meetings. If there's something someone wants to discuss, we jump on a call and we talk about it, or maybe we'll schedule something for later in the day or the day after. Every meeting that I've joined, I felt like there was a purpose to it and that is something that i can really appreciate because you guys know that in my previous job i sat in on meetings probably five to six five to six hours a day and sometimes i log off of work and feel like i've gotten nothing done because i've just sat in on meetings and it doesn't feel very productive especially when the meetings don't really have any deliverables or anything to be done definitely something that i really enjoy as a breath of fresh air to have less meetings but also to have more concise meetings that actually are impactful and meaningful and productive compared to just putting a meeting on the calendar to look booked and busy which honestly i'm not gonna lie is kind of the culture in many companies all right we're almost to the end of this video but the next topic is being on call this will be a really short and sweet section because i do not currently have on call for my current job or my previous job so I have somehow been lucky enough to not have any on call in a cybersecurity team, even in my past four teams slash jobs in cybersecurity. So that is definitely something to note. I believe when I had been talking to one of my teammates in the past, they had mentioned that maybe there might be an on call at some point, but currently I do not have on call rotations. Okay, so I've been talking a lot for basically the past 40 minutes. And this last part is just going to be a, do I have any regrets or anything that I might've done differently conclusion for this video. So in terms of regrets, I'm sure you guys watch this video. Overall, it's been very positive and I don't really have too many bad things to say about my experience so far. I mean, I really don't have any bad things to say at all. And I'm not saying that there aren't days where I'm stressed out and, and need to get stuff done for my job. There are definitely always going to be those days, no matter what job that you join. No job is perfect, no company is perfect, and it's all about what you're willing to accept that goes hand in hand with how much a job is worth to you and how much you enjoy the job. So I definitely do not regret leaving my previous job. The only thing I might miss is my previous coworkers. I still keep in touch with a handful of them to this day, whether it's through text. But one of the first coworkers I've ever became friends with in my previous job, we had a monthly one-on-one -on -one and we still are continuing that, but just now on Google Hangouts with just in my personal time because it's just nice catching up. And we basically had that one-on-one -on -one going for two years more than two years actually so yeah definitely not a tradition i want to break and a connection that i want to keep so definitely downside is missing friends or missing a few coworkers from my previous roles as well as the people that i worked with because i was part of a rotational program so we kind of had a little community around that and sometimes i definitely miss that and overall i don't think i have almost any regrets with my decision of, of starting this new role of leaving my previous job and i know one of you guys mentioned in the comments below of my i quit video i think that that my experience basically sound like i worked for a bank and i did work for a financial services institution so maybe that could shed some light on my previous job and what that environment was like and i'm not saying that job was horrible and and i really don't want to frame it that way because because i learned so much from that job and 
it gave me the foundations of the skills that I have in cybersecurity. So many people took a chance on mentoring me, on teaching me, on helping me on different things. So it's really not that everything was horrible in my previous job. It just so happened that I was ready to move on and I'm just really excited about my current job and, and just sharing more with you guys on this channel because, because honestly, even though I had coworkers who knew about my channel, it kind of feels like I've it kind of feels like a different side of my personality, which I personally think is pretty different from work. I don't know. Maybe it's just a different persona that you have at work versus in real life because people are typically pretty surprised when they find out I have a YouTube channel at work. Um, so yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you guys found it helpful. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions for me about my new job, remote work, cyber security, early careers, etc. And I will try to answer them in the comments below. And if you liked this video or found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. However, I'm trying to expand on this channel a little bit. So I want to post three videos a week at some point just letting you guys know that now i may eventually start posting wednesdays fridays and sundays and that will all depend on whether or not i find an editor so if you guys or someone you know has some experience editing videos let me know in the comments below i'm also in the talks with a few editors right now so you may already end up seeing three videos posted a week by the time i post this video but just wanted to give you guys a heads up on that because i have so many ideas for content on this channel and i just want to be the best resource that i can be for cybersecurity early careers and i think updating my posting schedule will definitely help with that and this is also inspired by josh he basically did a one video a day sometimes more than one video a day for 60 days and he is also a cybersecurity technologist very very experienced and good at what he does so i'll link his channel down below if you guys don't already know him but i'm sure you do but yeah his content is amazing and and even though i'll never be able to get to one video a day posting at least i don't plan on it i think three videos a week might be somewhere i can get to let me know also in the comments below if you have any topics that you would like to see because i'll have one extra video going out a week eventually so i do want to make a nice backlog of video topics to create all right that's it and hopefully i'll see you guys in my next video bye